I love the story of Jesus in Mark, the, uh, t- uh, the 12th chapter, I believe it is, and the 11th verse. <clears throat> Jesus wasn't referring to amounts as much as he was the contention or the position, I should say, the position of the heart. When he tells the story of the woman with the two pieces of money that she brought, very small pieces of money, some have said that they're less valuable than one of our copper pennies is valuable today. Uh, They were known as mites. And in the Bible it says, now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. What was he looking at? Have you thought about the questions that he sat and observed people putting their money in the offering with? Because this was where they brought their tithes. This is where they brought their offering. And he saw how they did it. And he says, and the Bible goes on to say, And many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which made a quadrants. So he called his disciples to himself and said unto them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury, for they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all that she had her whole livelihood. Isn't it interesting that God isn't as much concerned about how much we give as it is, as he is the percentage of what we give. Some people give a lot, but it's a smaller percentage. Some give a little, but it's a larger percentage. Many times God's most aware of how much we have left over. While men are impressed with what someone has given, God, who has it all, is more impressed with, this is the person who trusts me. He was the one who said, give and it shall be given unto you pressed down, shaken together, running over. This is how men shall give unto the givers. Red McCombs, owner of the Minnesota Vikings, said there's only two kinds of people in this world, givers and takers. He said, I try to hire the givers in my organization. Charity is giving without the thought of return. Brother Hyatt said it like this. He said, the most beautiful painting is the sacrifice of yesterday and the sacrifice of tomorrow. But the sacrifice of today is the more challenging one. I am romantically thoughtful of yesterday's sacrifice. I want to buy into tomorrow's sacrifice. But what is my sacrifice today? It's interesting when you study what the Bible says about money. Five times more it talks about money than it talks about prayer. Five hundred times plus it mentions prayer. Over two thousand times the Bible speaks concerning your possessions. Obviously God's concerned about what you do with what you've been given. He gave the parable of the men with talents and the one who went and buried his talent was the one who was in the most trouble and his whole concept was I want to make sure that I give back to the master what he gave to me and the Lord was saying you are a slothful servant you shouldn't do that you should invest what you've been given into the kingdom And of course, this kingdom that we're a part of is an eternal kingdom. In the Old Testament, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 16, 16, that every year they were commanded to go up to Jerusalem and celebrate the, the feasts. But verse 17 says, Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord, your God, which he has given you. I want to be able to give according to what he has given me. Sometimes that's more. Sometimes we don't have as much. But God is not concerned about the amounts as much as he is with 
you're trusting him, giving him what you have. And then what do you have left over? I want to make sure I give with a willing heart. I don't want to give because uh, it's like I've been put with my back to the wall. I want to give with a joyful spirit, a happy heart, thanksgiving that continues in our life. I don't know about you, I can't speak for everyone, but I can tell you this. I have a mission statement in my personal life. My mission statement starts like this. I want to be a generously kind man of faith instead of fear, who loves God and family and understands that this life is but a means to an eternal end. In that, that generously kind is the opening statement of my personal mission statement. I've got to live up to that because that's who I aspire to be, to be generous, to be a man that is able to give. And of course, I've got to answer to the man in the mirror, the man that I know who I am and say, am I giving so that that word generous can be applied? I want to, and I know you do too. Let's do something about it this Christmas season. Let's make sure that we are giving to friends, giving love, giving support, giving mon monetary things, giving value, not just giving to get, but giving to impact. That's what the purpose of giving to the church is all about. We want to take all the funds that come to us and multiply them so that the gospel is preached all around the world. That is our passion. That's what drives us. That's what consumes us. We're not in the business of building wells and we're not in the business of giving somebody computers. We are in the business of helping people get to a place where computers aren't needed. A place where health insurance isn't needed. A place there's, where there's no AIDS outbreaks. A place where there's no disease. No hospitals will be there. There's not going to be any rest homes in heaven. There's not going to be any cemeteries there. Oh, what a day that will be when we go see Jesus. And my main objective is to not have people comfortable in this world below. Because this world is not our destination. I'm presenting a world where there's no more pain, no more sorrow, no more setbacks, no more burdens. And it's not just a place of time, it's a place of eternity. Thank you for being with me this year. Looking forward to a brand new year at the end of this month and I pray that you're getting prepared for a great celebration of the year 2009. May the Lord bless you this Christmas season and I pray that you would remember your family, your church family, and your immediate family. Pray for them. Hold them close in your prayers. We love you all. May the Lord bless you richly. Have a wonderful Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Christmas and a happy new year. Now bring us a figgy pudding.